gratitude to the TEDx organizers and leaders for bringing us all together, and gratitude to each of you for coming together, wholly present now. I invite you back into your infancy. We are born whole. We are born wholly present. And we are, of course, born holy. The infant is inherently mindful, here for it all. And as we arrive here for our lives, as we look into the infant, we see a love, a love that can be almost a blinding love. Because by being here, we are present to the universe, which is made of love. The universe, we don't hear much about, oftentimes, between K and 12. And it can start to be the backdrop that we come to charge by on our way to school or in time work. But that's not the universe. Or the universe can come to be the guy on the bus who's irritating while we hurry home to the people who really count. The universe we know as an infant is made of love and alive. And when we show up into the universe, we inherently have a relationship of love, a two-way living relationship into which we arrive by being here, now, and present. Mindfulness, then, is the gateway of a relationship of love, a two-way relationship with the universe. And it's to this inherent awareness that we can always return through a personal practice of presence and mindfulness. Try selling that to science. That's been our work for the past 15 years, to explain through the language and method of science our inherent spiritual nature, a nature through which we are whole, born whole, born wholly present, and born holy, through dialogue with a living, loving, guiding universe. We get there, each in our own way, and we have thousands of years of teaching from our sisters and brothers through time and around the world. We call our practice into presence many things, but it always leads to awe and awareness of what we knew the day we were born. Again, try selling that through science. We've actually been working pretty hard along with fellow labs across the country and around the world to look at our inherent spiritual nature and see how indeed this dialogue with a living universe makes us whole. Our colleagues in Ken Kenler's lab have found that about 30% of our capacity to dialogue with a sacred universe is attributed to broad heritability. It's in our genes to have the physiology through which we can connect in a transcendent relationship. And that propensity surges in adolescence where the heritable contribution increases by another 50%. And if we come into our nature, there is nothing known to the psychological or medical sciences as robustly protective against the most prevalent forms of suffering in the second decade of our lives. Depression, substance use and abuse, risk taking. And of course, the second decade is the gateway to our lifelong practice. So our inherent spiritual nature, that through which we come to our birthright, in dialogue with the universe, might also be looked at, it being one unified universe, at the material level of our brain. We looked at folks who had, for several decades, along with Myrna Weissman, Brad Peterson, Ravi Bansell, and Craig Tankey at the medical school, 
And we found that those for whom a sustained personal spirituality was their lead foot, over time, developed a thicker cortex. What's so great about that? Well, the cortex is associated with IQ. The cortex is also, in its thickness, inversely associated with Alzheimer's. In fact, we found that the cortex thickened in precisely those regions of the brain which otherwise might be found to thin, given their genetic loading for suffering in the form of depression. We then said, that's nice, you can touch that. That'll sell, right? This is a material era. People will believe it. It somehow might feel more real because they can see it and touch it. What about wholeness? Well, that brain looks more whole. But what does that brain say about our relationship with the universe? And so we looked at the brain in full relationship with the universe. We asked these same folks for whom spirituality, a two-way relationship with a loving universe, was their lead foot to come in, lie down, and relax. And what we found, <laughs> adorned as they were, was that simply in a resting state, those who day in and day out practiced personal spiritual relationship, transcendent two-way relationship, simply in a resting state, had a brain which in many ways registered like that of an actively meditating monk, a brain that registered with high amplitude alpha. High amplitude alpha, that's how this wavelength is talked about in the medical sciences, also has another name. It's Schumann's constant, which is the energy at the Earth's crust. So the spiritually engaged brain, even when resting, measures at that wavelength found at the Earth's crust. I'm hopeful that 50 years from now, my children will talk about a primitive scientific people who measured consciousness by its wavelength. And if that is the case, high amplitude alpha in the spiritually engaged brain and at the Earth's crust might be simply the thumbprint of consciousness that is in us, through us, and around us. Consciousness that is inherently loving, consciousness into which we can feel, know, and find guidance from the day we're born. Thank you. <laughs>